Welcome to our workshop, Preparing for an Interview, presented by the Career and Internship Center. We'll start with a land acknowledgement. The University of Washington acknowledges the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Okay, let's talk about job interviews. The interview is the stage in a hiring process that comes after you've applied for a job and submitted your resume. Maybe you've sent in a cover letter and they've learned something about you from reading your materials and determined that you seem like a good fit for the job, but they wanna know more about you and your qualifications and your background. So they invite you to have a conversation with them uh, to talk more about that. The purpose of the interview for the employer is that they're looking for a candidate who has the skills and experience needed for the job. They're looking for someone who they think is gonna be a good fit for their organization. They're looking for someone who they think will be a good colleague, a good team member that they wanna work with, and someone who's excited about the opportunity to work there. For the candidate, it's your chance to find a position that will use your strengths and interests, an opportunity to grow and develop professionally, to assess whether you think it's a team that where you would feel comfortable and people that you want to work with, and if it's a good work environment. There are several types of interviews. The traditional type, of course, would be an in-person conversation where they invite you into their office and you sit down at a conference table together and they ask you questions. Um, oftentimes in a first round or screening type of interview, it might be done over the phone. Those are often shorter interviews. Most commonly now, the type of interview that you should expect to encounter would be a virtual interview. Synchronous would be, of course, where you're in a meeting, like a Zoom meeting together with the employer, and they're asking you questions in real time and you're answering them. Um, an asynchronous format of a virtual interview would be where they send you questions and then ask you to record video answers for each of the questions and send those in, and then they would review your answers at a later time. Other variations of interview formats might be that they could request that you prepare a presentation. They could have you work on a case study to test your skills at problem solving. Uh, they might have a technical component of the interview to test your technical skills and abilities. Uh, in some cases, there might be multiple candidates who they're interviewing together as a group. Certainly, the employer would tell you ahead of time if you should expect any of those kind of unusual variations so that you could be prepared for that. During the interview, some of the things that you would want to discuss would be obviously past experiences that show off your skills and strengths that are related to the job. So things that you could draw from might be volunteer work or community service, clearly any types of responsibilities, tasks, projects that you've undertaken in previous jobs that you've had or internships that you've had. If you haven't had a lot of jobs or internships, certainly a class project would be an excellent source of content that you could draw from to talk about skills that you've put into practice, ways that you've worked together with a team, problem solving that you've had to do, uh, particular types of tools that you've used in assessing data or other types of research that you've done, uh, leadership experiences that you've had in student organizations or other types of programs. Those can also be really good sources of content to talk about in the interview. Maybe you helped plan an event and you can walk them through some of the steps of what you had to do to put together that event. So those can be really good sources of content to draw from, even if you haven't had a lot of jobs before. Common questions to be prepared for. Certainly the first one and one that you should definitely expect that you will be asked would be some variation of tell us about yourself or why are you interested in this position? Sometimes they might be combined together. Tell us about yourself and why you're interested in this position. Um, it is the most frequently asked first question in interview settings. So our tip for how you might prepare for that would be to consider how your past experiences led you to this position and to be applying for this job that you're interviewing for. 
a good format to consider for that would be a present, past, future structure. So introduce yourself in the present, who you are, what you're studying, a little bit about you. It is helpful if you can tell them the pronouns you prefer, if that isn't already um, clear, and some things that you've done that are relevant to the role. So I studied this, and I did a research project about that, and that led me to find an interest in this field of study, and uh, that led me to apply for this position. Some things that you hope to do or hope to be, I hope this position will help me advance towards my ultimate career goal of this. And that's why I'm so excited to apply for this job. So that's a good way to kind of um, put things in context and also keep your answer focused so that you're not trying to recount your entire life story when they ask you such a large open-ended question like, tell me about yourself. You do want to keep it focused on how your experiences led you to apply for this job and that how that makes you a good fit for the position. Other common questions to expect would be behavioral questions. This is just a general category of questions that very often begin with phrases like, tell me about a time or give me an example when. Uh, some of the categories that they might ask behavioral questions about would be strong communication, solving a complex problem, dealing with a difficult customer, a time that you made a mistake. These are meant to help you focus your answers on a very specific instance of where you had to use these type of skills and abilities or demonstrate this particular type of character. So rather than saying, do you have any experience working with a team? They're going to say, give us an example of a time that you had to complete a project and collaborate with other members of a team. What happened and what was the outcome? Um, so it focuses your answer on a very specific example that demonstrates a larger ability or skill set. So that's what behavioral questions are. And it is important to be prepared for those types of things and to have some examples of times that you that you encountered these type of situations um, in a past experience. One way of structuring those answers that we recommend is using the CAR method. So that stands for challenge, action, and results. So talk about this was the issue that we faced or the problem or the challenge that we faced. This is what I did to deal with that and walk them through the steps. And then this was the outcome of what happened because of the actions that I took. That's a good way to keep those answers focused and also to demonstrate how your actions contributed to some kind of positive outcome. Other common questions to be prepared for, what are your strengths and weaknesses? I know this one can be challenging for folks, um, particularly around weaknesses, but first let's talk about how to showcase your strengths. So maybe you've identified a few things, communication skills, organization, project focus, and you wanna talk about those as strengths as how they connect with this position. The best way to do that is to support each of those strengths with a specific example. And again, you could use the CAR method. So. Uh, what, if you want to talk about organization skills, maybe talk about a particularly challenging, complex project that you worked on and how you kept all of the tasks and deadlines organized um, in that specific instance. Uh, if you want to talk about communication, give them an example of how you facilitated uh, effective communication in a past experience. And ideally, keep each of those strengths that you're talking about as you as you explain them to the interviewer connect them back to the position that you're applying for so and that's why i feel like i would be so good in this role because of my ability to you know communicate effectively uh, for weaknesses it is important to be honest you don't want to seem like you're dodging that question or making up kind of a phony answer but also, be aware that you don't have to reveal things that might really damage your prospects of getting hired for the job. And a good way of framing a weakness would be something that you learned about yourself that you needed to improve upon, and then follow that up with 
an explanation of how you undertook improvement in that area. So I found out that I needed to work a little harder in this area so that I could improve my competency in this. And what I did was took these steps to improve. So, and if you have an outcome on that too, and the outcome was that, you know, I ended up being much more effective in that way. Um, that can be helpful too, to add on to your explanation of how you worked on a weakness. So this slide shows just a few things uh, for different categories of skill sets and knowledge that they might ask about, some kinds of stuff that you might draw from, particularly as a student. So if they ask you teamwork and collaboration questions, maybe you could draw from involvement in an RSO or research experience where you were working together on a whole research team or work experience, even something like food service at Starbucks where the functions of each team member are very specific and everybody has to know their role and work together in an effective way. Uh, leadership, maybe technical skills, if they're doing something that involves data visualization, just a few examples here in this chart of different types of past experiences that you might draw from to generate some good challenge action result stories that you could talk about to showcase your skills. So one other thing that you should be prepared for in an interview is that at the end, after they've asked you a lot of questions, they will invite you to ask questions of them. So it's very important that you do have some questions prepared. It doesn't look good if they turn it over to you and say, do you have any questions for us? And you just sort of pause and can't think of anything. So do prepare some questions. Some things that you might ask about would be, um, you can see this little chart over here, maybe the culture of the organization. How would you describe the culture? What do people like about working here? Uh, other things about maybe career development in that role or that organization, would there be opportunities to advance or get promoted or take on additional responsibilities as you grow into the role? Other things about the training process or how they evaluate success, next steps in the interview process, that might be a question to save kind of for the end, but just asking the employer a little bit more about what it's like to work there what the job involves, how they determine success in their organization and for their employees, so that you can get a sense of what they value, what they're looking for, and what the employees who already work there like about working there. So those are good types of questions to ask. Questions to avoid. First of all, basic information that you should already know from the job description or the company's website. Hopefully you've done your research and you understand what they do and the basics of what their company is about. So you shouldn't need to ask things like that. You wouldn't wanna ask right away about taking vacation or leave or how soon you would get a promotion. And the interview is not the time to put them on the spot about a final decision about whether you got the job or not. They will let you know that afterwards. So a few tips and next steps as we get into the home stretch of our workshop here. Interview tips. Definitely do your research. You need to know about this company. You need to know about the role. Usually job descriptions will give you all the clues that you need in terms of what's expected in that specific role, but also be looking at their website, understand what kind of work they do. Um, if they've made any big new advancements lately, uh, you should know about that stuff. So be familiar with what that company and that organization does and what their values are. And know your own strengths too. You're going to need to be talking about yourself a lot, which many of us don't do all that often. So be prepared to be able to identify what your strengths are and articulate them in a meaningful way that someone else can understand. Prepare some different car stories, challenge, action, and result, demonstrating multiple different kinds of skills. That's so important. And you can have those prepared for a variety of different kinds of scenarios, even if you don't know what the interview questions are going to be in advance those stories will probably be useful to you regardless of what questions they ask you because you can refer to them for any number of different types of skill and expertise assessment type of situations. Be sure to practice out loud with a friend or a career coach, ideally both. It really makes such a big difference to 
get yourself used to talking out loud and working through these answers. It helps to prepare you to be more focused when it's time to actually do the interview, but it also helps you to be less nervous because you've already kind of gotten yourself warmed up and you've gotten used to it. So it doesn't feel so awkward when it first when you first get started. Everyone, of course, is nervous when they do a job interview. No one is expecting you to be a perfectly polished TED Talk type of public speaker when you're in a job interview situation, but uh, it definitely helps to do a little bit of practicing ahead of time. Prepare your questions to ask the interview committee, like I said just a moment ago. Uh, do uh, feel free to ask about the hiring timeline at the end of the interview. So if they don't tell you that already, which oftentimes they will say, the next steps are we're gonna be you know, completing the interviews by the end of this week, and then we'll let you know sometime next week. If they don't tell you that, it's okay for you to ask, when should I expect to hear from you next? Something like that. Or what are the next steps in the hiring process? Will there be a second round interview? And then this is so important. Be sure to send a thank you email afterwards. Not everyone does this, but candidates who do do this definitely make a good impression. And it's a good way, assuming that this employer is interviewing multiple people, it's a good way to help them remember you and just get that one more chance to make a strong impression on them. So when you send a polite and thoughtful thank you email to each of the people that was involved in interviewing you, that really does help um, leave a good impression on the, on the employer. So be sure to send a thank you email. A few virtual inter interview tips just specifically for when you're doing interviews virtually, Find out from the employer in advance what software will be used. Of course, that's very important. Some companies only use Microsoft Teams or use WebEx or something like that. Of course, most people use Zoom, but do find out if they are using something that you are not accustomed to so that you have that installed on your computer and you have your account all ready to go. So when it's time to start the interview, you're not having to download or update anything. Test out the hardware and software beforehand. Make sure everything's working. Make sure you've got your audio settings all dialed in. Uh, make sure your webcam is working. And then also just think about your environment of what they're going to see, what they might hear. Make sure that it's quiet. Make sure you've got your webcam angle at an ideal setting where it's not way above you or not way below you. Ideally, it would be fairly straight ahead at eye level. Uh, and that there's not a lot of distractions. This wouldn't be the time to have your dog barking or to have your cat crawling over your keyboard or something like that. So just try to keep it distraction free so you can be focused and also so that the interviewer can be focused on you and not thinking about, you know, those weird posters that are in the background or something like that. A few things to remember, words of encouragement. If you are getting an interview, they have deemed that you are qualified for the job. Like I said at the beginning, they've already weeded out a lot of people that they chose not to interview and they've chosen you as someone that they think can do the job, but they just wanna find out more about you. So you're already um, on the list of people who they think could do the job. So that's a good thing. And they do want to make a hire. So uh, keep in mind also that they're rooting for you to do your best. They would love to hire someone from this process, and hopefully it will be you. But also, um, if you do see any red flags along the way, you don't have to accept a position just because you did the interview. So if, if conversing with this employer makes you feel like, oh, I don't think this is a good fit for me, I don't think I would really want to work there, it's certainly okay to let them know afterwards thanks, but no thanks, or even if they make you a job offer, you can still turn that down. So again, it is your chance to also assess whether that employer is gonna be a good fit for you. Some resources that we have in the Career Center, Mary Gates Hall 134 is where we're located. And these are both things that are physically located in our center on campus. We have a Husky career closet. So that's a place where we've collected some professional attire, various kinds of clothing that might help if you don't feel like you have the type of clothing that you would want for a professional interview type of situation. You can come and check out the clothes we have there. There's uh, different styles and sizes and across different kind of gender identities. 
So hopefully you could find something there that would help you feel a little more confident going into your interview. And that is a free service for students. So you can come by anytime. You don't need to make an appointment in advance and check out the clothes that we have in our Husky Career Closet. We also have private space for virtual interviews. So these are just small rooms that are in our center where you could go that would be a quiet, distraction-free place with reliable internet and Wi-Fi uh, so that you could do um, a virtual interview there if you didn't feel like you had a good space to do that somewhere else. Um, and you can reserve those in advance um, at the Career Center. Last next steps for you would be definitely practice, but if you want to practice with a career coach, you can make an appointment with us through Handshake. We do practice interviews that are an hour long. So we would walk through some questions with you and then have some time afterwards where we could give you feedback about how you might be able to strengthen your answers. That can be really useful, especially if you haven't done uh, interviews before. Doing a practice interview with a career coach could really help you a, improve your effectiveness, but also just improve your confidence and feel a little bit less nervous because you've had a chance to do a practice run through. And we've got a ton of videos and other tips and resources, including a video of this workshop on our website um, at the link there. So thanks for joining us and good luck on your interviews.